Hi, thank you. Guys. Thank you for joining all of you to this uh, Smart City session and at the Fiber Fest. Um, uh, just a few recommendations before we start. Uh, this is a live event and it's being recorded. That means that you, by attending, you agree uh, to the recording uh, that will be made available on Fiber's uh, YouTube channel afterwards. Uh, should any of you have questions during this session, please drop them into the chat, adding, if possible, the name of the speaker um, uh, the question is for. Now let's uh, welcome uh, Pierre Gotz uh, that uh, will present this session. Pierre is the Chief uh, Digital Officer of the city of Erne in Germany. He's a public administration specialist that joined uh, the city as an organizational developer and change manager. Since uh, 2013, he has been working on projects uh, focused on digitalization and process management. Pierre is also a lecturer in e-government, digitalization and knowledge, uh, knowledge uh, management, among other uh, areas. The stage uh, is yours, uh, Pierre. Welcome. Thank you very much, Anteles, for introducing and thanks to the whole marketing team for preparing this session. Yeah, dear sir and madams, <coughs> welcome to the Smart Fest of the Fireware Foundation. I'm honored to welcome you to discuss the opportunities and challenges for future cities in our panel, Smart Cities and Mobility. Um, yeah, and now I will shortly introduce the speakers and the panelists of this session. At first, there is Noel Eldridge, he's from the city of Gothenburg and you will get further information to all of them in the panel. Then we have Leslie Hawthorne from Red Hat. She will moderate the panel. We have Antonio Jara from Popu, Mark Pascal Lerich from Engineering, Davo Meersmann from the OASC, Cyril Sauvignage from Atos, Abai Sharma from IODX, Ricardo Vitorino from UBWare and Johnny Westerland from Red Hat. Okay. So now we will start the session. And as Ulrich already says, the Smart Cities and Mobility Committee is one of the flagships of the Fireware community. Thanks to Roberto for introducing the committee in the grand opening session. But not at least the Corona crisis has, has proven that we need a smarter future for companies supported by technology and data ecosystem within the cities. And now we want to look into the future. <clears throat> but what is the main idea of creating smart cities? Smart cities need both at the beginning, smart people and smart economy. Also smart education by using the Internet of Things, platforms and big data as tools to support people and companies by developing their city into a resilient, climate protectional and sustainable future. We need to get cities into a more livable, resilient and sustainable future. But how could this work? We have already published the so-called Fireware for Cities booklet. A big thanks to the whole marketing team around Christina Brandstetter. But what it's... <coughs> I'm sorry, but what is in for you? Wien, for example, presents the Smart Data Wien platform. Yeah, Wien, for example, has developed a Smart Data Wien platform based on Fireware technology by using the Fireware Orion Contracts Broker, providing a global standard NGSI based. API for large-scale contextual information management. This data lake based on open source technology powered by Fireware allows economy to use data to improve their own business models. From my experience, I can tell that the city of Herne, for example, was allowed to decrease costs for routes and personnel of garbage trucks up to 30% using Fireware technology. Furthermore, one moment, I hope you can see it. Furthermore, the city of Eindhoven, for example, has implemented an urban data platform too to reduce the crime rate in hotspot areas. 
by analyzing noise, lighting, frequency, and other data-driven information, the city is allowed to recognize criminal activities earlier, and so improving the life of people. The whole potential of fireware-based technology is illustrated in this booklet, Let's Do It Together, Fireware for Cities. This time, over 36 cities with 41 solutions in 13 countries around the world were shown. Cities and companies can learn from each other in order to get into a smarter digital future. But what is the vision in future? What is your linking potential? I hope you can see the slides. To interlink the world and the different sectors of living, we need a new culture of sharing. Data, technology, and know-how driven by cities, companies, and citizens. By talking about smart cities and mobility, topics such as ICT, big data, and Internet of Things correctly cross into your mind. Not at least the renewed and signed collaboration agreement with the OISC, Ulrich mentioned in the main board, for improving and supporting the Smart Data Model Initiative shows the data and standardization relevance of fire technology. NGSI LD shows potential to solve future problems by interlinking digital data transfer, which is an example for the power and strengthness of the fireware community. <clears throat> it is about improving environment and ecosystem for each city, citizens and especially companies. Digital future needs strong economy and networks, best practices and open source technology have to be shared to improve our daily business. Smart cities are not only improving people's lives, but, all, <clears throat> but are also helping to increase the company's business and life cycle to strengthen economy and livable environments. But for this, we need a new culture of data sharing. Data spaces need to be created to improve the daily operations in each sector. For example, mobility, logistics, e-health and retail. We need to bring the added value of a sharing data economy clear to the actors of city environment and management. And now I will introduce the funding project called Smart Cities Made in Germany 2021. It's a funding project by the Federal Ministry of Interior for Building and Homeland in Germany. And who was allowed to participate? Further cities located in Germany. The strategic baseline was given by the so-called Smart City Charter Leipzig and the National Dialogue Platform. The title of the funding was Integrated Urban Development and Digitization. And the topics, there were three topics um, of sustainability economy, ecology, and social development. The aim was out of the crisis together, solve COVID. Spaces for future focused on livable spaces, climate and resource protection, prosperity and healthy living conditions for people in the cities. But how could this work? Restructuring and revitalization of urban digital spaces and structures made by people and companies. What was in it? There were up to 17.5 million euro per, per city. Of this, up to 15 million for implementation of solutions in the next four years. The framework was developed solutions should be scalable and replaceable by using open source technology. Developing solutions, not just talking about it. And this shows the relevance of fireware technology for improving the development and usage of those solutions. And
and the Fireware Foundation, for example, was participate, participating in over 10 funding proposals of the Smart Cities Made in Germany Corps this year. Several more proposal participations of the foundation have been signed for this year. The aim is to create smart cities powered by fireware technology with a user-centric approach. Fireware is right away participating in supporting the creation of smart city architecture and smart data models in cities to increase economy, ecology and social development. The ministry's aim is to support the usage of those open source technologies in order to improve the rep replicability for other cities and regions. But it's not just about strategy and talking about projects. It's about developing and realizing those by funding. So I would like to invite you to participate in those projects to support cities, economy and citizens to improve the development of smarter, more livable cities. <clears throat> Furthermore, the Fireware Foundation is participating in several funding proposal, proposals for the so-called Gaia-X call. Those activities will improve the relevance of the member organizations and the largest European digitization project. A vision of an interlinked cloud infrastructure in the digital single market. Finally, Fireware is a door opener for funding and scalable solutions. What is in this session for you? Artificial intelligence, e-health and interlinked mobility need data lakes and platforms. Atos and UBWare will show us the importance for, of fireware-based solutions to deploy urban data platforms and the potential of artificial intelligence for data protection. As a lighthouse project, Heidelberg City Compass is also improving smart people's lives by using platforms and data powered by Fireware. To realize the European digital single market, Fireware will play a central role in using Fireware technology to interlink people, companies, countries, and in the end, the whole European continent. Continuously using a user-centric approach, the aim is to create sustainable solutions. The approach is also an advantage, an advantage for companies too, because every city using fireware technology can use your solution too. It's not just about improving life of people. It's about the possibility of a global scale approach by using NGS ILD as an open source standard. Fireware brings open source technology and key standards supporting cities at every step of their digital transformation journey. First, breaking silos and enabling interoperable services within the city, following a system of systems approach, then supporting portability of solutions and full interoperability between cities, regions and the continent. And finally, boosting the creation of open innovation ecosystems by unleashing the potential of publishing not just real-time, but also right-time open data and the participation in data spaces that enable the materialization of the data economy. As the co-chair of the Fireware Smart City Support Committee, I can tell you that we are working on different strategies to interlink those several topics, which are relevant for the development of our cities and papers trying to solve challenges like resource protection, mobility, climate protection by using fireware technology. In this session, we will dive into the role that fireware can play in helping those cities to boost the creation of open innovation ecosystems and the development of a data economy thanks to the smart usage of data. Through keynotes and specialist speeches, International experts in those fields will discuss relevant topics such as the adoption of common standards and information models to break information silos and exploit data across verticals, city platforms and data-driven innovation 
to support decision making, openness, interoperability, and multi sided markets. In addition, real life use cases will showcase how FireWare members are implementing smart cities faster and more efficiently with less disruption to city operations. And now, I'm giving the stage to Cyril Sovniash from Atos. He will share the vision of fiber deployment in large scale city projects. He's, he has 20 years experience to develop IT solutions in various business domains as an IT developer, project manager and program manager, sound expertise in research and development programs and innovation management. Currently Cyril is an charge of, innov of innovation Atos Lab and Atos Smart City Roadmap and Product Manager of Urban Data Platform, the Smart City Platform by Atos. Cyril has developed his ex expertise on European standards like 1M2M, Cooperative ITS and Etsy and GSI. Experienced project manager with a passion for addressing new business problems and challenges. Cyril is fully engaged with the ability to generate long-term working relationships with clients and colleagues as his main skill. Continuous training in new areas and his expertise and ability to coach a team, Cyril is recognized as a project manager professional. Thanks, the stage is yours. Thanks, Pierre. So, hello everyone. Uh, so, in this presentation, uh, we talk about uh, intelligent transportation system um, and the platform, uh, how we manage uh, intelligent transportation system platform with the urban data platform. So, talking about uh, intelligent transportation system, um, the goal is to bring security, safety, and efficiency to a smart territories environment by implementing new standards for real-time communication between vehicles, road infrastructure, and all road users. So this will also facilitate the introduction of autonomous vehicles and optimize mobility in order to reduce carbon footprint. And we will see how this uh, intelligent transportation system platform is linked to the territory with our Atos Urban Data Platform based on Fireware. So basic use cases around the intelligent transportation system. So of course the goal is to have real-time information directly in vehicle, but also to update uh, uh, message panel uh, on the road. Uh, to better manage traffic lights and the priority. Also to see in real time if there are workers on highway, highway or if uh, an emergency vehicle is on approach to let him pass. And also a traffic jam because uh, if you need to brake very quickly, it's important to have this information in real time and um, avoid collision. And of course, you have also all around the uh, point of interest uh, like uh, uh, car park uh, and uh, availability or charging um, machine, uh, etc. So in this uh, platform, uh, you can see here, this is a global ecosystem of uh, ITS platform. So of course, we work with our French ministry. So um, to have the national node uh, in France, but of course this platform uh, interoperate uh, with uh, other national platform uh, at the border. And you can have also ITS platform from car manufacturer. And uh, you can see here also um, roadside unit and uh, external ITS city node, for example, to better manage uh, the roads for the city. So this is a global ecosystem where all vehicles communicate all together because this is the goal to have a V2X, a V2V stack and uh, to be aware of uh, the environment. And I would say um, 
with uh, you have also the smart city platform to have a global policy for example i don't know around uh, we will see a use case around the um, pollution to reduce traffic or the speed uh, on the road all this communication at ITS level are made with uh, different protocol. You see ITS G5 is a secure Wi-Fi um, protocol for uh, road communication, or it can be also, of course, 4G and 5G in the future. You have uh, an hybrid communication. And what is very important is to have uh, the security and the PKI uh, keys in order to communicate securely uh, in this uh, global um, uh, ITS uh, deployment platform. So now what I will show, so I will show a short presentation, uh, demonstration. So um, around the, the ITS platforms that will display uh, a variable message uh, on message sign, you can see here in France, uh, and all is triggered by a rule based on the smart city sensor, so air quality sensor in that case. And we will see in real time this information directly in the variable message uh, panel. We can have also the other way of communicating with the uh, urban data platform uh, where there is an accident and we need to have uh, emerg an emergency uh, uh, to coordinate emergency in a crisis situation. So let me show my screen. So you can see here, this is uh, the ITS platform. So we can see in real time uh, all vehicles uh, communicating. Of course, it's not the, the it's a demonstration platform. It's not the platform from our ministry, we, but uh, we work with our ministry in order to deploy this platform in France. So you can see here all vehicle on uh, the map and all standardized messages on the road here. So typically you have uh, all messages on traffic light. Uh, so of course it's real time communication. So there are a lot of messages. Uh, uh, so if there is uh, an event, you can have uh, um, special messages for accident or um, display panel, etc information or parking location etc so and uh, this platform of course um, ingests a lot of messages because the goal is to ingest uh, uh, global uh, all communication from vehicles and infrastructure so we work a lot on scalability uh, on this platform and how to have an elastic platform in order to ingest more and more messages so what is important in this kind of platform is really to have um, a low latency in order to treat events so you can see here uh, on fireware uh, we use uh, up let me connect okay um in the Fireware platform, we use uh, several models. So of course, uh, we use uh, alert model and air quality observe in this demonstration. So we have all air quality um, shared in the platform here. Uh, and we have rules around air quality. If the air quality is bad, uh, we can raise an alert directly uh, in the platform and in the Orion broker, of course. And you can see all events in this interface. Uh, for example, you can see our quality, but uh, you can see the, the rules raised by the platform. So here we raise an air quality alert and the goal is, re is to reduce speed on the ITS platform. So we will send a pollution message to the ITS platform. So directly in the ITS platform, you see now you have messages directly on the road or embed uh, in the car uh, in order to reduce the speed globally in the, on the road. 
So of course, this is uh, basic use cases, but uh, also accident I, are plugged, of course, with a data platform. And so you can see also alert directly in the platform uh, from accident. So here you have car accident and uh, you can also treat this kind of alert. So all is shared with the ecosystem thanks to the Orion context broker. Uh, and here I can, um, I can push this alert directly to a third party system. Uh, so in this case, it's a incident management tool that can uh, treat this alert uh, with police, firefighter, fighter, and organize uh, the emergency uh, resolution. So of course, it's a short demo. I don't have a lot of time perhaps to finish. So I want to highlight uh, the, we didn't do this demo alone. Huh? We work a lot with, uh, with uh, Red Hat uh, on scalability on this platform at uh, smart city level, but also ITS level. So this platform is based on, uh, we use um, OpenShift that also Quarkus to uh, have a low latency on uh, services and uh, auto scaling capabilities and those are Red Hat tools. And uh, I can add, we work also uh, in parallel with the Fireware Foundation in order to improve scale, to improve scalability around uh, all the systems to, uh, and also Red Hat on Red Hat Cloud. I think I finished. Um, and perhaps I can let the floor. Thank you very much, Cyril, for this really fantastic presentation. I think um, it was a very good example for using fireware technology. And yeah, thank you very much. Are there any questions? Not for the moment. If there are any questions, please write in the questions and answers chat on the right side. And I think Cyril will, will be available <clears throat> for you if there are any questions um, in the future too. Now we come to the second speaker, Ricardo Vitorino. He is a Smart Cities R and Research and Innovation Manager by UBWare and Vice Chairman of the ISG CIM at Etsy. Ricardo is an experienced software engineer with a demonstrated history of working in the information technology and service industry. He is managing UBWare's software development team for smart cities to create innovative solutions that can improve our world's quality of life. His strong engineering collaboration in research and development projects backs on his professional experience as well as his background in Informatics Engineering from the University of Colombia. The stage is yours. Uh, thank you so much, Pierre, and thank you to all the Fireware Foundation for the lovely organization and this opportunity to be here with you on this uh, very interesting panel. And congratulations to Cyril and the team for the very nice demo that you've done before. Uh, so I'm here to present our, our vision at Ubiware for the smart cities uh, with the, the proposal of City Nervous System. And uh, for those of you who do not know Ubiware, we are a software development uh, SME, so a small enterprise based in Portugal, in Aveiro, which I highly encourage as long as, as, as soon as you are vaccinated and uh, comfortable enough to travel to come and visit uh, our lovely city uh, and get to know also our offices and solutions, which are mostly focusing on new technologies. So we work a lot on uh, research and innovation, and uh, we leverage on European funding to explore novel use cases and new technologies uh, that apply to our commercial strategic areas, which are, of course, smart cities. Uh, otherwise, we wouldn't be here, uh, where we try to improve mobility, environment, and energy in the urban region, but also telecom and future internet, where we help implementing re reliable telecom infrastructure for 
five G ensuring quality of service, quality of experience uh, in uh, in different different use cases and domains. Uh, when as as uh, Cyril also mentioned, well, uh, especially as uh, as an SME, we cannot work alone, so we also uh, re rely on uh, reliable partnerships all across Europe and the world, uh, including Fiverr Foundation, which where we are. Uh, gold members and uh, uh, happily and proudly uh, one of the impact and success stories and that's proven because we now 14 years old company has technology running in uh, more than 60 cities worldwide from bike sharing systems to smart parking solutions to uh, some of the technology that i'll present here uh, today so getting straight to the point since uh, um, now i think it's, it's useful to know a little bit more about uh, what is this vision of the city nervous system and how fireware can can help so all of this experience working with uh, with smart cities and uh, helping them deploy different solutions we understand that uh, it's very challenging to um, work with uh, an environment that changes so often which is organic because people are moving around every day uh, there are routines that change uh, from the weekday to the weekend that change from the the season of the year uh, so things change along the time and there are different organizations uh, moving and working with different priorities uh, sharing the same urban environment so for a, a city for a decision maker for uh, a regional government uh, if they cannot be able to see or uh, work with the, what's happening outside as this digital organic as an organic system uh, it's very challenging to make the be best out of it so our proposal and our vision uh, for cities is to actually look at, at the urban environment as a, a nervous system so an organic approach to city to city management and uh, i will not give you a biology lesson because i'm not the right person to do that but the main mission of the nervous system is to efficiently transmit signals uh, to the different actions of the, the different parts of the body and coordinate efficiently uh, all its actions and some of them are, are these decisions or this uh, uh, um, uh, this coordination action happens at the central core so the central nervous system where all the information uh, goes to this single place and all these decisions are, are, are made there or at least most of the decisions are, are made there and that's the parallelism that we do with our smart city platform where we can aggregate the different data sets that uh, are happening and being collected uh, in the urban environment regarding mobility energy and environment so to give the city uh, on the one hand the real-time uh, vision of what's uh, happening there so providing a digital twin of what's exactly happening at the street level uh, and aggregating data from multiple uh, sources uh, including iot devices platforms vehicles mobile applications open data portals information systems that are already in place and that's where fireware can help us a lot because by promoting open source technology <clears throat> generic enablers and uh, agile development tools that uh, have really proven along the time we can ensure that we can uh, integrate data from multiple sources thanks to context broker thanks to iot agent thanks to different uh, uh and, and standard uh enablers and tools uh, we can uh, make this data flow to the to the central nervous system so to the cloud uh, platform and this gives the real-time capabilities of uh, not only collecting the data but actually doing some analysis getting some insights getting some uh, ideas out of it uh, because we want to help cities to respond quickly as our uh, body uh, body responds quickly to the actions that uh, the brain uh, <laughs> takes so and for that, and uh, since we are not only responding and uh, reacting to incidents and we want to also plan ahead, uh, we also provide capabilities of uh, providing this uh, urban planning capability. So looking into more less dynamic uh, uh, information like uh, evolution of buildings, uh, geographic areas, searching information that would probably be managed by a geographic information system. Uh, the urban platform does not replace such tools, but it integrates with the data uh, that's being de uh, designed and, and, and created there uh, and can uh, leverage on that to correlate with other information and help cities plan for their operations, either to uh, organize an event or to see how the city is growing economically and demographically and help them uh, make better decisions. So uh, again, also promoting some of the data that we collect some of, the, some of these insights back to the geographic information systems. Um, and what about the community, right? So where, do, where does the citizen come here? So um, citizens are part of the, the community and one of the uh, active members uh, benefiting from smart city initiatives. So on the one hand, we want to ensure that they can communicate 
uh, with the central nervous system. So providing mechanisms and tools to collect feedback from them. And the first feedback that people are typically willing to provide is to report on issues and incidents that they would like to, to solve because they, it's the, it, their quality of quality of life is struggled by them. Um, so at the first, this, this is the first approach by collecting these incidents and uh, things that need to be fixed within the urban environment, but can be easily scaled to quality of life surveys or other uh, feedback from uh, the community. Because in the end, city decision makers and the, the, the staff wants to see data that proves some uh, insights. So besides looking at uh, mobility and, and, and data like parking and traffic, seeing the different uh, insights, getting KPIs, getting the correlation of the, the information, also the feedback from the community is, is essential uh, here so that they can assess the usability of the different uh, services and, and the tools that they implement, uh, but also to analyze the true impact on the environment and the mobility. But in order to do it effectively, we need indicators. So we need to analyze the performance of uh, the city. And there is also a, a part of where standardization takes a place. In this case, the International Standards Organization, which defined KPIs for quality of life benchmarking in smart cities so we can comply with that with these kpis and ensure that the city can benchmark itself towards the united nations sustainable development goals but also compare with other smart cities that are deploying different technology or similar technology and see how they are evolving and take the best out of the the smart cities ecosystem but this is all mostly on the central nervous system and our body is more complex than that so our vision doesn't end there and we continue the analogy with the peripheral nervous system where we have and we can leverage on infrastructure that is widely available at the street level and closer to the data sources to actually have some intelligence. So when we think of uh, street furniture uh, as, as, it is, as it is originally and we think of the data sets that can, collect, that can be collected from the city, we are looking at the possibility and implementing solutions that can digitize and collect information from multiple domains uh, by not cluttering the city with more hardware and equipment and also making them uh, less less pollution, less visual pollution and making them embedded in uh, street furniture. So our first approach was to create with a joint venture with uh, two other um, uh, Portuguese uh, organizations, actually European leaders in the pole manufacturing uh, and telecom uh, infrastructure provisioning. Uh, and we've created the smart lamppost, which is be besides the street lighting pole. So besides giving a uh, street light, it also can provide EV charging, IoT sensing, uh, neutral hosting for 4G and 5G connectivity, and also edge computing to get that uh, nervous system running and making some decisions and analysis. On our end, as the software provision, besides integrating all of this and allowing it to be interoperable and uh, scalable and ensuring that this, the data can flow up to the cloud services and systems used by the cities, we also enable a marketplace where the cities or the infrastructure owners, uh, if, they, if they are different or multiple organizations, can have a return on investment. So it's not only on the sense of implementing uh, IoT equipment and collecting uh, uh, data, but also having this return by renting the infrastructure to third parties like EV charger or content distributed uh, operators. And all in all, to help them uh, solve the issue of sustainability, so tackling the challenges of becoming more sustainable in different domains, but also ensuring and demonstrating that a lot of the research and innovation done in Europe, thanks to initiatives and associations like Fireware, can help SMEs like Ubiware make their vision a reality and deploy these solutions in more than 60 cities uh, worldwide. So this is what I wanted to share with you today. I'm really happy to be here today and I would like to encourage you to get in touch, get to know more about some of these solutions and uh, find collaboration opportunities. We'd love to work with you and uh, get to know your, your challenges and pains. Thank you once again, and uh, I hope I didn't speak too fast, but I'm available for questions via email or the, the session chat. Thank you so much. Thank you very much to Ricardo Vitorino. It was awesome. Um, let me mention that there is the possibility in the table in the launch, Smart Cities table, there you can join after this session um, to talk to the panelists and the speakers here to get more information. Now we come to the next speaker, Mark Pascal Lenrich. He's the head of Smart City Integration from Engineering ITS. 
and he has been working for the German engineering group since 2018. Here he is responsible for the smart city business area in which he acts as a consultant, product and project manager with a focus on the digital transformation of cities and municipalities, including the development of smart city structures. In here, the stage is yours. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Pierre. Um, so one short question, you, you can see my screen? Perfect. Okay. So yeah, then um, also for me, um, very welcome to this um, to this session. And um, uh, today, I would like to um, to present you a short overview about the project. <clears throat> We have uh, done um, at the end of last year with the city of Heidelberg, uh, where we uh, was uh, where we were able to use urban data uh, to build uh, citizen information uh, by using a powered um, by fiveware data and um, service platform. Yeah, but before um, I dive um, into the project, um, some uh, short words about um, the company engineering. We are the engineering Germany. Uh, we are part of the global engineering um, company with its origin in um, Italy. Um, the um, uh, engineering company has around about engineering Germany has around about 300 employees uh, with a strong focus on um, IT service uh, development and research projects. One of our main pillars here is, um, is the smart city um, area and together with our mother house um, in Italy we can look on um, smart city projects, successfully smart city projects uh, worldwide. So but today um, uh, we will um, have a look on the German market and um, as you uh, saw in my introduction, uh, one of the uh, cities uh, we incorporate is the city of Heidelberg. So um, Heidelberg is um, a city with uh, around uh, 160,000 uh, residents, is uh, located in the southern part of Germany. And as you saw in the screen, uh, some of you want to visit the city, it's a beautiful landscape um, there. And uh, beside uh, this beautiful landscape, uh, the city drives a lot of uh, digitization in initiatives um, uh, really fast forward. Uh, therefore, um, they um, they founded at least the um, digital agency um, of Heidelberg, which was also in charge uh, to drive the project with us and uh, to uh, drive this whole spirit of digitization uh, really fast uh, forward here in the city. But by um, all these uh, projects, um, the city of Heidelberg is uh, planning um, or currently doing. Um, they have a strong focus on the uh, sustainable development goals. Um, I think every one of you know these goals from the United Nations. And here we have a strong focus on um, facts like mobility, on action areas like modern city services, environment, participation, or energy. So um, what we have done in um, our uh, core Operation. Um, we have an, a special look at the um, modern city services and participations. Yes, and as I mentioned, um, Heidelberg uh, drives a lot of initiatives um, uh, forward. They have some uh, systems uh, up and running and um, they aggregate a lot of data. So and our mission in this uh, project was, um, hey, how we can use this data and how we can provide this data for the citizen. Because um, as you can, um, as you can thing. Um, there are a lot of systems, IoT systems and other data systems which aggregates um, all these uh, different kind of data and for the end user, the citizens, it's really hard to have an access uh, to all these data. So for this reason, in our project, uh, we had a look um, on the urban data. Uh, we collect them uh, by using um, engineering uh, smart uh, city lab, which is powered by Fiverr, uh, to build um, modern um, dashboards uh, with the citizen here as um, as an end user. So um, let me dive a little bit uh, deeper what we have done and uh, which topics uh, were relevant here on this um, on this page. So as stated, um, there are a lot of systems, there are a lot of um, a lot of data aggregations um, inside the city, and we decided uh, to use um, data from IoT services. Um, so Heidelberg has a um, strong um, LoRaWAN um, wireless network and other systems. Uh, they provided us uh, data from uh, the smart parking application which shows us the occupied or free parking slots um, from uh, from car parks they have a local um, recycling glass container <clears throat> 
Recycling Class Container and um, IoT Weather Stations, as well as um, out of their smart uh, winter service, um, the filling level of salt silos. And uh, beside this, yeah, I call it local IoT data, uh, we decided also to use uh, free available data from, um, uh, from the market. In this case, um, uh, the traffic volume uh, powered by TomTom navigation. We uh, use the weather forecast from Open Weather Map. Uh, due to the terrible time with uh, the corona, we decided um, to, um, to use the um, current amount of cases uh, directly from S3, um, as well as um, social media entry is uh, powered by Twitter. So on all these um, different um, data um, sets uh, you can uh, see here, we uh, dive into um, three, uh, three uh, main parts, the mobility, health, and um, uh, social media. And uh, with this, um, we um, used, um, as mentioned, our Smart City Lab, which is mainly powered um, by, by fiverr components. Uh, that means um, yeah, all the components you, you know from the architecture uh, point of view, that means the context broker, the IoT agents, um, the, uh, the components for the data persistence uh, we used here, as well as other established components. Uh, that means, um, for example, for the visualization, um, for um, for the workflow management, uh, we use other open source um, uh, tools. Uh, the whole system is um, uh, driven on a, on a Kubernetes. That means uh, it is uh, cloud driven, and um, in our in um, in our case. Um, we are running the system to connect the different uh, data sources um, and yeah, to build at the end of the day uh, smart services, uh, dashboards, uh, and um, all this in agile, uh, in agile uh, matter. Um, so one quote I really like at this at this point is um, that one you see on the top: "Technology evolves from the primitive to the complicated um, to the simple." So and this was exactly the spirit we are following here. So and I think um, this spirit um, we. We can um, follow by um, by the help of the fiber components because um, you get a lot of um, the best practice methods. You got ready to use components um, to to build um, applications like this in a really fast way. And um, I think it was also shown that uh, the whole project uh, was uh, done from the first idea until to the delivery uh, under uh, five weeks. So, but um, before I uh, start uh, too deep into technical details, uh, let me show you um, how it uh, looks like and what was the result of our work. Um, yeah, as um, I said, it, we um, set the um, uh, citizen as a main stakeholder um, here in place, and it was our requirement uh, to build a uh, dynamic dashboard uh, for uh, web and mobile um, devices, which means that the citizen should use um, all this information really on every device um, he has. So for this case, one of the requirement was uh, to build a dashboard which is uh, responsive, and uh, due to the fact uh, that we want uh, that the citizen are, um, are able to use um, in uh, further in further steps um, this uh, kind of dashboards to plan his journey through the city, to plan his life, and to make his life a bit smarter. Um, we decided um, to uh, to get this information um, uh, provided uh, next to uh, to real time. So um, let me switch my screen, and then I can show you how it looks like um, in real. Um, so as what you see um, here is um, an interactive map, which is uh, centralized um, of Heidelberg. Um, we can uh, see on the left side uh, data selection, where you can select uh, different data sources. In this case, the parking uh, parking uh, garage, uh, which is um, uh, popped up uh, as a pop up uh, with um, uh, some more information if you click on it. And what you see here is um, on the top a color indication. Um, uh, this shows us hey here just uh, two places um, uh, free. Um, it's um, not so much uh, space in here if you look look at um, others, um, this one is red. Uh, let's see, yeah, here we have a little bit more space. It's a green, um, a green button, uh, it means uh, you can go there. Um, other data sets uh, like uh, the traffic flow on the um, inside the uh, street is also shown uh, directly on the map. Um, as well as uh, the other um, informations like the uh, glass container. Here you can see the filling level, um, the last uh, the last measurements, 
um, and also the uh, winter winter silos, which is um, now to this uh, to this time uh, for sure full. Um, if you look a little bit um, more at the bottom of the, the dashboard, you see some more widgets with detailed information. So, for example, the weather information, which is provided by um, Open Weather RP. Um, on the next tab, uh, you see the IoT weather station, as well as um, also from Open Weather RP, the weather forecast. Um, and here you can see for the next uh, week or for the rest of the week, um, the, the weather conditions you expect um, here inside the city. So um, before I um, I mentioned that we also build smart services, um, what do I mean here? Um, a smart service on our uh, point of view is um, if you have a different kind of data and uh, you bring a next a new value to this um, uh, data. One example I can show you here is um, into the winter service. Um, here we build a service that is um, based on the um, weather prediction you see here on the on the um, on the right side as well as the information the temperature and um, humidity information from uh, the weather station. And with a, a calculation algorithm, uh, we have built here um, a service that uh, gives you an um, in, in hint if there is an overfreezing um, on the streets happening uh, or not. So just a small services, but uh, it could have uh, could have a uh, big impact um, inside uh, your city. So if you uh, collapse um, uh, this uh, widget, for example, you, you see also the uh, detailed information to all these um, uh, connected uh, silos. Uh, you see the street, the location, as well as the, uh, the filling level. So one specially uh, we have here with our Corona Compass, um, as mentioned due to the uh, terrible times, uh, we decided to, uh, to put it in. Um, you see on the top um, all the uh, current information, like the uh, current cases, the seven days incidents, but you can also see as a citizen, hey, how is the pandemic? Uh, the, how is the uh, structure of the pandemic? Um, what's the cases um, over the time? Yeah, um, so far I think um, uh, that's it. Um, a short, really short um, overview. So if you uh, want to have uh, more details, um, you can uh, visit uh, fiverr.org. Um, here we have uh, written an impact story together with the city of Heidelberg, um, where we can um, get uh, some uh, deeper information um, also about the use cases, the data behind the use cases and how um, the system looks like. And also on our uh, web page, uh, engineering-its.de, you find a short uh, project summary. Yeah, and um, at the end, um, I hope you had a good um, a good understanding what we have done here. Um, and um, I would be happy to um, uh, stay in contact with you and uh, discuss um, maybe some uh, future projects. And yeah, let's create a world of tomorrow. And at this point, um, have a nice um, session here. And thank you for your attention. Thank you very much. <clears throat> For this presentation. Now we have to hurry a bit. Um, now we come to Leslie, Leslie Hoffer. She will moderate the panel, the following panel with the um, specialist discussion. She has spent the past 20 years creating, cultivating and enabling communities, building open source software, sharing business expertise, spanning enterprises to NGOs, including senior roles at Red Hat, Google, and the Open Source Initiative and Elastic. Leslie, the stage is yours. Thank you so much for your kind introduction, Pierre. If I could ask all of my speakers to please turn their camera on so that we can see you, it would be lovely. Um, welcome everyone to the final installment in today's deep dive on smart cities and mobility. I am honored and privileged to moderate today's session on smart cities, and I am joined today by esteemed panelists representing the outlook of municipalities, nonprofit organizations, and software vendors who are creating solutions to smart cities, both from the startup and global scale company perspective. Uh, we'll begin today with a single round of questions, one for each panelist and look to answer questions incoming from the audience as well. So please use the conversations tab in Airbnb to submit any questions you may have for our panelists. And then we will conclude our panel with short remarks. So without further ado, I will go ahead and introduce you to our speakers today. We will hear from Devor Mearsman, the CEO of Mearsman, the CEO of Open and Agile Smart Cities, 
Mr. Mearsman is the CEO of Open and Agile Smart Cities and a global change maker with more than 15 years of international experience in setting up leading infrastructures and organizations on the forefront of technological innovation. We will also hear from Mr. Noel Aldrit, a solutions architect focusing on IoT for the city of Gothenburg. Noel has been working with IT questions for the last 30 years, primarily within the intelligent transport sector and smart city concepts. Recently, Noel has been employed at the Central IT Organization for the City of Gothenburg, where he is working on developing a common city information platform and IoT platform. We will also be hearing from Mr. Abe Sharma, who is the VP of Development for the India Urban Data Exchange, or IUDX, program. He brings more than two decades of experience to IUDX, including industry leadership roles at Motorola and analog devices. We will also be hearing from Mr. Johnny Westerland, Johnny is an avid open source supporter and has been working within the IT industry for more than 20 years. At Red Hat, he is working with the cloud and infrastructure domain, but has a broad and passionate interest in IT in general and how it can help organizations and customers. And our final panelist, last but not least, Mr. Antonio Yara, the CEO of Hop Ubiquitous, which is a company focused on the smart cities market with solutions for citizen engagement, tourism, active participation, physical web and environmental monitoring, and also in actions that are related to security and privacy. Uh, gentlemen, as Pierre mentioned, we're running a bit behind schedule for today's session. So I'm gonna ask you kindly to limit your remarks to three to four minutes each, please. Uh, we will begin today with a question for Devor Mearsman of Open Agile Smart Cities. Uh, Devor, today, Fi the Fireware Foundation and the Open Agile Smart Cities organization have announced a collaboration agreement so congratulations to both parties. Uh, can you elaborate a bit? Tell us what is OASC and what are you going to be building together with Fireware? Yeah, thanks, uh, Leslie. So um, uh, today, I think, was a formalization of a, a collaboration that has existed for, for many years. Uh, as OASC, we represent the demand side and uh, Fireware represents, let's say, the innovation and supply side. So in a sense, it's a, it's a really good match. Uh, in terms of what we do, of course, we work on the level of a specification and then Fireware, um, uh, well, um, build stuff that works. Um, so the, the kind of what are the, the MIMS, they're essential um, mechanisms that us to, um, you know, uh, let's say um, it's a minimal setup that allows cities to uh, share solutions, services, data amongst them. Uh, there are three dimensions, let's say. You should, you should think of them as a, a, a local institutional uh, capacity for uh, the digital age. Uh, there are three dimensions. Um, uh, Antonio, if you could mute, I think yeah, there's quite a lot of feedback. Thanks. Uh, so, the, um, uh, the, so cities and local levels, they need to uh, interact, uh, they need to do that securely, and they need to do that for a reason and be able to measure what they did, whether that had an impact. So, the, so you have interaction, integrity, and impact as three fundamental dimensions. And for those, you need data models. You need to uh, essentially speak the same language so that the systems can interact. MIM1, which is the, the core one, let's say, so that's uh, what we call Context Information Management API. It's essentially the same as uh, the Ceph building block, as the ETCIG SIM uh, spec, as all the uh, context brokers that, uh, that Fireware has and so forth. Uh, and then on the data models front, there was, um, you know, uh, uh, so the, the agreement today uh, is, is the um, a commitment uh, to the smart data models. Uh, in so far, the NGSI context broker um, is involved. Eh? So there, I mean, those are the data models that work with the context broker. Therefore, they are a safe bet. I think part of the work will now be to explore what the best ways are in which the uh, those data models can evolve. Eh? So what's the, the the shape of the input that the cities can uh, work towards? And just a quick note, I know I'm going a little bit out of time. Um, so um, the uh, another part of the collaboration agreement is the integration of um, the uh, city by city catalog of OSC and the Fireware Marketplace. The idea is that the uh, solutions that get onboarded on the Fireware Marketplace also show up on uh, the city profiles of the city by city catalog after they have been approved uh, by those cities. So it will allow, I think, us jointly to develop a picture of where Fireware is being deployed uh, around the world. Thank you so much for your remarks, Devar. And once again, congratulations to OASC and Fireware for their collaboration. 
We'll turn now to Noel Aldrit with the city of Gothenburg. Uh, Noel, are open standards very relevant for cities? Um, is it important that they be backed by open source implementation alternatives? And uh, what are some of the other important implementation aspects to consider? You must unmute my friend. That You are still muted. I think if you unmute very gently, because what's happening is your mic is toggling on and off very quickly. Try speaking now. OK. Uh, it seems to be extremely sensitive, the button. <laughs> um, yeah, um, these uh, questions are really important for us. We're actually in the process of going from uh, to creating a common service for the city. So we've actually run quite a few different projects where we've been looking at these questions, such as score water and, and iris. But the important uh, things with open source is to reduce lock-in and open up for competition. Uh, and this was going to require policies and guidelines for us within the city. So it's not just about taking in this. Uh, we really want to encourage local research institutes, re reduce the thresholds. Uh, we have a lot of vertical solutions, and many of these are already smart vertical solutions. But the challenge is to create a cohesive horizontal integration with common data models. And, and this requires a, a lot of policies and a lot of going out into the organizations and, and making everything work together. Uh, you asked the question, are open solutions important for us? And yes, they are. We, we need these open standards. Um, and it's these things we, we see will, will, will make big differences. Within the city, there's been several uh, very successful implementations with common map, uh, map uh, based components and um, the challenges with the open source solutions are always with the, the service licensing agreements. Who do you ring when it stops working on a Saturday night? And always going from a project to a production environment, these questions come up and quite often this is where things get stuck. Um, now this leads to a new thought set for us in the tendering process. Quite often we just take in the requirements and then we go directly to a tendering process. Here we sort of have to think it's going to be a change in how we do this. Are we tendering a, 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 a knowledge? Are we tendering companies that can support an open source product? Or are we buying a licensed product which has an attached SLA? So we have to sort of think in a different way. And this is quite a, a challenge. We also have to let people know that we want to think in a different way. And the big challenge with, a, with a, 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 a open source product is we have to be aware that we have to engage ourselves in that open source uh, community. Uh, quite often we forget uh, that a product has an active marketing organization where they're telling us about changing, getting in information about how to create new products. If we want to be part of this change, then we have to engage in it. And that means an organizational change as well. So we, we have to think about how we tender things, how we are configured as an organization, as well as from the tax point of view, can we share solutions with other organizations? Can we get external financing? And how both local tax money, national tax money, and European tax money can benefit other cities. So there's quite a lot of things for us to think about with many positives. Thank you so much, Noel. That was very helpful. Um, I will turn the floor now to my esteemed colleague from Red Hat, Johnny Westerland. Johnny, um, bringing the base open source platform infrastructure able to cope with production demands of systems that are as complex as smart cities is one of the core businesses of Red Hat. Um, could you please elaborate on how Red Hat is working with the Fireware community in this area? Uh, yeah, thank you. Thank you for the question. Quite, quite elaborate questions, actually. Uh, so 
I'd probably like to uh, tackle that one in, in kind of like two different angles maybe. So what is Red Hat doing directly together with, with Fiber and the, in the community and what are we doing indirectly? So from an indirect perspective, there's a lot of things that Red Hat does to contribute to the overreaching Fiber community. So, you know, if, if we just look at the community open source, you know, the project, the submissions, the investment from a code and technology perspective, Red Hat invests, you know, every engineering piece we do basically goes to an open source community, either one that we foster or govern ourselves or one that we contribute together with others. So you'll have technologies like Kafka, Keycloak, like Kafka, Keycloak, Linux, containers, Kubernetes, and so on and so forth that are, you know, needed building blocks or, or like Noel said, horizontal platforms for different entities to deploy to. Uh, also, in, in later times, we are also trying to contribute to the community how to actually operationalize that software. So there was a big, uh, during our keynote sessions during the summit, where different uh, leaders at, at Red Hat talked about the Operate First initiative. So how can we actually show and teach the the open source community how to operationalize their software. As the question alluded to, smart cities fully built out can be you know, extremely complicated or complex systems that require a lot of things to be able to run and operate at scale. So there's an indirect thing here that that is 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 one aspect. There's also that X also extends into you know the partnerships that we build from a generic perspective. So we've we've heard speakers here from, as an example, Ados. There's also others like NEC and Telefonica where we invest heavily into those relationships. So that's the kind of like the indirect. The, or the indirect aspects of what we're doing that we hope that uh, the the wider uh, fiber community sees value in. And then we also have the more potential direct things, right? It's 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 difficult to be comprehensive because there's so many things, uh, which is quite interesting. But but uh, you know, one thing is that we directly you know are par partaking in the fiber community as a, as a member, as a platinum member. Um, partaking in different technical sessions and discussions on how to build and architect solutions. So how do we bring that scalability into to running these platforms? So blueprints, architectures, or reps, recipes for you know any entity really to uh, successfully operate things at scale. Uh, there might also be aspects of security. There's a lot of thing in the end that needs to, at runtime, be protected. And that is a long, hard work where we, in the end, contribute all of those fixes up to the upstream communities and make those available for Fiber members to deploy on their choices of, of platforms. So th there's multiple different things that we are doing, both indirectly and directly, to hopefully make make uh, the Fiber community more, more successful. So. That was it from my end. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you so much, Johnny. Uh, we will now turn to uh, Mr. Antonio Yara, the CEO of Hop Ubiquitous, for his thoughts. Uh, Antonio, this idea of democratizing opportunities is a very promising idea, but uh, we'd like to hear the voice uh, fr from people who are actually capitalizing on these opportunities within the FIWARE context. Um, how has FIWARE helped your company to, to develop new business and uh, in how many cities have you engaged? Or if you could tell us a little bit about the companies you've partnered with uh, uh, and how do you potentially see the incorporation of Red Hat into the Fiber ecosystem? Yeah, thank you so much, Leslie. So indeed, this is, I think that you are still uh, correct with the work democratization because uh, as we are working with Fiber, we are having the same opportunities as other large corporates to access to cities. As you mentioned, right now, Hope is, uh, is working in more than 40 cities. That is just a tremendous number in the smart cities ecosystem in Spain, affecting cities like Madrid, Barcelona, Valencia, and key capital cities uh, around Europe. And indeed, there is also a very important aspect. That is that when we want to go to another city beyond uh, Spain, there is a huge number of partners and ecosystems that we are working together. I think that is very remarkable, for example, now in the COVID era, how we are working together with engineering, launching a new venture together with them in Italy, like Protect You. Also, it's very interesting how we are launching and addressing tenders and opportunities together with companies like Atos or NEC or Telefonica in different opportunities. So I think at the end of the day, the, the, the capacity to, to add value proposition, to focus in a specific verticals and to bring the 
extra value of putting all the bits together is, is very, very valuable. And for example, it's not only me, also my colleague Ricardo from UbiGoer is having the same the same experience that we are interconnecting all the pieces together. So this is very nice because Hopo is 100% specialized in air quality monitoring, environmental monitoring. We are like leading and trying to be the flagship reference solution in environmental monitoring based on fire. And then it's very tremendous all the value to integrate and to bring this piece of value to all the different parties. And talking about Red Hat is really remarkable. We are working now with Red Hat in order to support this this aggregation of value also for the United States, also this value proposition as part of the open source ecosystem. And this is much more news to come in the future, but this is very remarkable also how this open source community together with all the value proposition of an open ecosystem is, is really, 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 really valuable. So I think that at the end of the day, Fiveware is an ecosystem, it's a platform in order to integrate all the pieces. The cities are really engaged, they are seeing the value. The growth of number of cities that was not very well as part of the open and smart cities growing exponentially. To say that a small company, we have more cities than employees is just tremendous. Just also demonstrate that if we have more cities as customers than employees, is we are in that number more or less. So it's because really the theory is working, it's scalable, it's replicable, and also because we have a very strong ecosystem to make it worse. So yeah, I can remark that Firewall is working and the most important the ecosystem also is a quite working ecosystem and complementary system. Thank you, Antonio, very much appreciated. Uh, well, we will turn now to our last but not least panelist, Mr. Abe Sharma. Um, Abe, uh, is this demand for standards for data for data exchange within a city the the core of the IUDX initiative in India? Uh, I believe that that's true, and we'd also like to hear from you uh, more about IUDX specifically. If you could tell us about its history and some of the challenges that you faced and the opportunities that you see ahead, um, and maybe a few remarks on how IUDX and Fiware collaborate, please. Yeah, thanks, Leslie. Um, am I audible? We can hear. Uh, great. OK. Uh, yeah, uh, good morning, all. Yeah, India Urban Data Exchange, IUDX, was actually exactly born out of the need that you said. Uh, basically, it was born out of the need to enable like data exchange between various cities, departments, agencies, application developers, researchers. And the overall goal is to help our cities become more data smart, right? So like enable data-driven decision-making, holistic policy-making, which was not happening in the first wave. The first wave of smart cities, as you know, there are 100 uh, smart cities in India, uh, which were initially going to become smart like as a project. So that, that was very technology and solution-driven. What I mean by that is that, yeah, there's an urban challenge you want to solve, you you look for a solution, you deploy a solution. That's actually not a bad approach, it's good. It helps you get there quicker. Uh, but then it leads to data silos and uh, interfaces were, and, and every city went ahead and did the same thing. So the blueprints were not standard, interfaces were not standard. Data exchange in fact was an afterthought, right? Um, however, the good thing was that it was a great base digitization was taken care of, data layer was more or less in place, although it was non-standard, but it was there, right? That's where IUDX stepped in. IUDX is a data exchange layer slash framework. It's completely open source based on underlying framework of open standard APIs and data models, as well as secure and consent-based data sharing. See, there was a lot of this uh, nervousness in sharing data when it was uh, open, right? So. When we made it consent-based, I think a lot of a uh, lot of providers of the data, especially the government agencies, they came on board because now they can actually share this data with the application developers that can help them. Right. So just as I said, basic core core principles are open standard APIs, data models, and uh, Fiveware therefore is a natural partner, as I would say, there's a very strong alignment of the core beliefs, right? And uh, we are collaborating actively uh, with, uh, uh, with with Fiveware, and this collaboration has already um, 
led to uh, like us, IUDX, adopting Etsy and GSILD APIs for data access. And we're also collaborating on smart data models activity. In fact, there's a, a session tomorrow uh, on smart data models where I'll be talking a bit more about the data model activity. But essentially, you can assume that all the data that we are seeing, the data models for all of that is going to uh, it's going to be published on the smart data models also, right? Currently, IODX is deployed in 10 cities, uh, uh, but but um, uh, we, we have a roster full, and I think our charter is to get to close to 40 to 50 cities by the end of year three, and we are on track to do that. And uh, But what it means essentially, especially as Antonio uh, said just before, right? What it means is you have 10 more cities now which are serving data uh, data with Etsy and GSILD APIs. And therefore, that many number of more number of apps that can be built. And that is the key. With this association and with this common principle of pushing for the same data exchange standard, I think we the, the, the playing field for people who develop apps is suddenly increased. And I think they can get hold of more and more data coming out from different parts of the world. And I think uh, it, it's good for both the stakeholders, right? The cities can get, get uh, cities can get more, uh, more like exciting solutions as well as I think, and, and more and more application developers will get the data and in an interoperable, interpretable format. So I think uh, I will stop here, yeah. Thank you so much, Abe. We appreciate your remarks. Uh, folks, as I mentioned in the introduction to this panel, we do have some time for questions from the audience. You can either drop them directly into the chat tab in the conversations tab in AirMeet or use the Q&A tool. We do have currently one question in our Q&A tool, which I will address to uh, Mr. Noel Aldred from the city of Gothenburg. Uh, Noel, from uh, our esteemed master of ceremonies, Pierre, uh, first, he sends his thanks to you, and his question is, what do you think is the main challenge to get people activated? Is it just about engaging and bringing competence, competencies to the right people? Um, I think it's a lot more than that. It has to be about, the, especially within a public organization, is what's, what gains do you have? Uh, it's tax money. So you're, you're talking about a, a movement of where they are today to another place and that change will will cost things uh, if i was to connect with the the data concept uh, by opening up the data you create a dialogue with the citizens in the city and if you have a good platform to deal with that dialogue well then the quality of the data will increase most people are scared of that change so you have to create an attitude uh, change and we've even seen very positive effects where we were missing data in our data sets, where as soon as we opened them up, we created a dialogue with the citizens and they could advise us where our data was lacking, which resulted in a higher quality. So I think you really have to sort of be very proactive with your communication, uh, not just, okay, learn this, learn that. You have to actually change the processes as I mentioned earlier in the tendering, how you treat dialogue, uh, data. Data is a dialogue, not a monologue. And I think that's the most important thing to think about. Thank you very much, Noel. I appreciate that. Um, all right, folks, we have about 10 minutes left, uh, which will include time for concluding remarks for each of our panelists. So I'm going to go ahead and address uh, one more question. Uh, to Devor Mearsman, and then we'll move into our concluding remarks. Uh, Devor, uh, OASC is mainly a network of cities for cities and uh, plays a role in connecting each of them and finding a structured way to channel demand for common standards and technology baselines. Can you tell us about some of the concrete actions OASC is taking to implement the vision of a global single digital market for cities? Yeah, so, so uh, thanks for the question. So I think that there's a number of uh, layers there. Um, the, the network, indeed, uh, it's uh, cities, uh, towns, and rural, rural areas. So, so we don't discriminate on size. We think, uh, uh, we're set up that way. We're free to join uh, because we Your want audience. to be accessible to any um, uh, community in the world. Um, the, we work on the local level because that's where the global problems converge. Uh, of course, if you look at... Uh, 
uh, procurement and, and, and other types of aspects. You need to look at national levels, you need to look at the supranational level, uh, continental or also the global. So what we do is we, we start from the requirements and kind of the, the implementations uh, that are ongoing. Cities propose uh, things that might be useful to others and those kind of make their ways uh, to, to uh, a MIM state uh, or different um, uh, stages of uh, MIMS. Um, the um, national governments have picked up on that, uh, so, so they have uh, been publishing national guides in Denmark, Netherlands, uh, in um, uh, Flanders, there is also in Japan uh, the initiative there. So, you know, th that's all ongoing. In terms of Europe, uh, so we are, uh, let's say, part of the uh, living in EU uh, movement. So there, there's a technical baseline there called the MIMS Plus. So we, we head up the, the technical working group there. Uh, and that essentially uh, takes the MIMS and then puts all the other useful European kind of um, uh, frameworks uh, around, you know, sta standards-based stuff. Uh, that is useful for scaling up uh, smart city solutions. So that's part now of the dig Digital Europe um, uh, program, or digital program, I should say, and a, a kind of a, um, a bunch of flanking um, uh, things. We've taken that principle of having like MIMS and then stuff around it that, you know, goes a bit further than we typically do. And uh, that's we do that also at the UN level, so currently at the U for SSC. So we're looking essentially to... And that's the need we see from cities. They, they all know, okay, they'll need a data platform to you know, have a digital twin or to battle climate change you know, based on science and knowledge and things like that. So they need to procure it now, probably. Uh, I think there's, there's some, some sort of a wave upcoming uh, in that sense. And they, need, uh, they don't want to be locked in. They need it to be open and so forth. So it goes in the, in the, in the tender, but then what? Uh, so you need to specify, okay, what exactly am, am I asking for? How are you going to check whether it's satisfied? So you need that, those kinds of um, uh, bells and whistles. And that's what we uh, uh, help them provide uh, with partners. We always uh, work with partners uh, on everything. We're kind of uh, humble uh, in the sense, uh, if it happens, we're happy. So we're happy to, to work with everybody on uh, as long as it's a, a good thing to do, a good thing to do. Cheers. Thank you so much, Davor. Uh, and I was, I'm doing just a quick time check and I'm realizing we have time for one more, one more question. So I'm going to go ahead and turn the floor over to Antonio Yara. Uh, Antonio, you are the co-chair of the FIWARE Smart Cities Domain Mission Support Committee, which brings together members of the FIWARE community to align on vision and collaboration activities in the domain of smart cities. Can you tell us more about the activities of the Mission Support Committee? So right now, the activities that we are supporting is first, raise awareness. So we are creating different, uh, right now, white paper, hot books, in order to make sure that all cities can exchange the different experience. One of the most important points of FiveWell as part of the smart cities is to guarantee that we can exchange experience from one city to another in order to enrich this scalability and replicability as far as possible. Also, we are promoting the exchange of good experience. And the last point, and I think more important, is we are aligning all the smart cities technology with all the new opportunities of the data economy. Talking about data sovereignty, artificial intelligence, all this kind of aspects. So that is the reason we are also launching specific uh, books and specific information about how to manage data sovereignty and also the, the data exchange in a secure and ethical way. And of course, all the alignment with one of the major initiatives in Fireware, that is the Smart Data Models Initiative, where we are continuously promoting the generation and exchange of different smart, smart data models. So at the end of the day, is the alignment with all the technical aspects to make sure that we are always in the last needs of the city, but at the same time also guaranteeing that no one is, is one step behind exchanging experience and making sure that everybody can engage and take benefit of fiber technology. Wonderful. Thank you so much. All right, folks, um, as we are drawing to the close of our panel discussion, I will call upon each of our esteemed panelists to provide us with some concluding remarks. Um, if each of you would please uh, let me know uh, a final statement or a key message that you would like to leave all of our audience members with, and I'll call upon you in the same order in which we did our first round of questions. So, Devor, the floor is yours, your key message. Uh, yes, yeah, so, so I think um, the, the key message here is that uh, we, we are working on the same side or on different sides of the same problem. So, let's uh, uh, explore you know, how we can make this um, uh, partnership. Uh, more fruitful and, and more uh, concrete than it was, um, uh, you know, in, in past years. We've done good stuff, but we can do great stuff. 
um, there will be um, uh, you know a program developed that I'm sure both communities will be informed of and so forth. Uh, on the 16th next week is our general assembly where we will kind of uh, launch a bunch of stuff. So we'll make sure that the uh, fiber community is also updated on the developments from uh, the city side, so you guys can uh, find that uh, solution fit to all the problems that are out there. Thanks. Excellent. Thank you so much, Devor. And next, we'll turn to Noel. Noel, your final statement, please. Yeah, uh, it's not just a technology question. That's probably the most important thing. This is more about organizations than anything else. And if I could add one thing, it would be data is a dialogue, not a monologue. Make sure you have systems that can deal with that monologue, uh, dialogue. Uh, thank you very much for sharing your thoughts, Noel. I will be contacting you after the session to find out if I can put that on a t-shirt. I'm not joking. Uh, we will turn next to Johnny. Johnny, your final message or closing remarks. Yeah, I mean, I think it's fantastic. I, I'm, I'm quite a, what's the term, newbie. I'm a new beginner in, in this topic around smart cities. But I'm amazed at the passionate people and the, the, the drive for, as Antonio put it, democratizing the opportunities, because I think that's an increasingly important thing to make sure that there's an ever vibrant community and, and, and uh, possibility for, for growth around many different SMEs and, and smaller and bigger and medium companies. So great stuff. Uh, fantastic to be here. And thank you. Thank you very much, Johnny. We'll turn now to Antonio. Antonio, your final message for yeah. our audience. So please. yeah, from my side, just one message for the cities that I just challenge them to bring to the Fiber Foundation with their needs and challenges, just to make sure that we can help them elaborate the next generation of solution with them. It is not it's not a technological issue, but it's not either an economical issue. As we are talking about here, we are talking about open source, we are talking about open communities, open exchange of information. So economically, every city is able to adapt the solution to their needs. I can say that we are working with cities with uh, budgets that are less than 50,000 euros and other cities that budgets are over 2 million or 5 million euros. And all of them are taking benefit of the fiber, are taking benefit of the city. So it is not only uh, is an aspect about money, it's not uh, it's an aspect about community, ecosystem, exchange of experience and data. And we are pretty confident that whatever city that has a strong interest to join the next generation of smart cities and to be part of the journey of digital transformation, let's make sure that Fiber Foundation will be a strong partner will be a, a good collaborator and not will be any economical challenge for them because it will be everything adapted to their particular need. Thank you, Antonio. And Abe, your concluding remarks, please. Uh, yeah, thanks. Uh, yeah, I think uh, uh, it was good to be part of this panel. I would just like to leave a message that, yes, Fiveair and IUDX collaboration has uh, as I said, broaden the field for application developers. So I think our next really uh, big objective is to let's come together, work hard to create this global community uh, of like truly portable solutions and uh, you know uh, application developers. So that I think with the effort of th this, with this effort, I think cities worldwide can actually benefit from uh, from this data exchange and standardization that we have all been working hard on. Okay. Thanks a lot, yeah. Perfect, thank you, Abe. And folks, we're gonna go ahead and conclude right on time today. I wanna to thank A, I wanna thank everyone for their time, attention, and participation in today's session. If you'd like to hear more from any of our speakers today, you can join us in the lounge area, which will be accessible via AirMeet. If you go into the schedule area, you'll find a tab for the lounge, and we will all be there to, uh, to be in further dialogue with you. Thank you so much for your time and attention today.